Welcome to a tutorial on the 8085 logic operation instructions. Okay, so in this video we're going to discuss about the logic operation instructions like, uh, you know, oring, anding, okay, such kind of instructions, okay. Now, here I'm just going to give them over here, so we just start with the logic and instructions okay so let's just pull the page down a bit okay and in the logic and instructions we have two instructions there okay and they are the instructions written in blue over here okay so one of them is a n a okay and the other is a n i now let's start uh, with the a n a instructions okay the meaning of the a n a instruction is given here on the left so as you can see the a n a instruction what it does is that it performs bitwise logical and operation between the data byte that is contained within this specified register and the data byte present in the accumulator okay so i'll give you an example over here so this specified register as i am talking about over here could be anything i guess starting from a b c d E H and L. Okay, so it, it can be any register starting from the register A to L. Okay, so this includes all the uh, uh, you know registers inside the 8085 microprocessor. So I'll just give an example uh, to uh, just give you an idea of what is going on over here. So let's say the uh, register A contains a data byte of 0 A H. Okay, and uh, the register B over here contains a data byte of 3 uh, okay 3 CH not a problem now if we can write rather if we would basically write the code uh, well a n a b okay so you have to uh, uh, well this particular register would mean the uh, register I mean any register other than that of I mean, uh, whose data byte we want to, uh, you know, bitwise, uh, I mean, whose data byte we basically, you know, want to end with the data byte in the accumulator, okay? So here, since we want to uh, perform bitwise logical end operation of the data byte, that is 3C, present in uh, the register B with the accumulator data, so we write this kind of a code okay if we I mean if this uh, data that is 3c were present in the register D then we would have wrote Anna D okay so fine so now what happens over here is that now if you just take the binary code of each of these data bytes now here it means bitwise logical and operation now bitwise logical and operation means uh, let's say if this is basically the D0 position then D1 D2 D3 then 4 5 6 and 7 so you can see that well uh, we are going to you know and the corresponding bit I mean the corresponding uh, bits of the specific positions so here uh, for the D0 position uh, for both the data in the register B and the accumulator their corresponding bit values at the bit positions D0 would be ended together so 0 and 0 makes 0 okay and then we move on to the position D1 okay so 1 and 0 whenever the D1 position bits of both the data in accumulator and the register B are ended okay then we get 0 once again and so on if we just go on performing the bitwise logical and operation then this is the result that we are supposed to get okay so now dividing it into two groups we will obtain this in the hex uh, code as well 0 8 H so this is our result so once this instruction gets executed this result is again stored in the accumulator there so this is exactly the same thing that happens for all of the uh, arithmetic and logic operations that basically takes place in the 8085 microprocessor okay so here the operand is basically the register whose data byte we want to be perform you know bitwise logical and with the data byte in the accumulator that's there goes the a and a instruction okay and now for the a and i instruction okay this is the same okay as that of a and a the uh, operation is the same bitwise and operation so in this case with the only difference that well in case of the a and i instruction the same bitwise logical and operation takes place but it takes place between the accumulator data okay the data in accumulator and any specified 
8-bit data okay so in order to declare the ADI instruction if we were to you know possibly uh, perform the same thing okay uh, as before I mean whatever we did you know the example that we just showed for the ANA instruction if we were to do the same with ANI instruction then um, well if the accumulator contained the data byte well 0 a h okay like in the previous example that I just you know showed you a while ago uh, and we wanted to you know perform the logical end of this data with the data 3ch then we wouldn't need to store 3ch in any register instead we would have just directly written it like this ani 3c and just provide this 8 bit data over here so whenever this instruction would be executed the same operation would take place that has you know happened over here and we would have got the same result that would have been stored in the accumulator in this very same way that I just showed over here okay just you don't need to use two registers you can just use uh, I mean since one of the data is already present in the accumulator you can just go forward and perform logical and with any other 8-bit data and just by providing the data I mean the data byte you know directly okay so this is the logical AND instructions over here and now and this is how the flag bits would be affected okay due to this particular example that I just shown over here okay now let's just move on to the the logical OR instructions okay and uh, well these instructions uh, as you can see we have two of them that is one is ORA and the other is ORI now well these instructions are also declared pretty much in the same way as uh, the ANA and the ANI okay the logical AND instructions it is and uh, only the difference between them being that these are OR and those are logical AND instructions okay and similarly uh, the ORA and the ORI the ORA instruction well it performs the bitwise OR operation between a data byte in a specific register so which we need to specify over here uh, then that forms the operand of this ORA uh, instructions as you can see and uh, now the ORA would perform this bitwise OR operation between the data byte in the specific register as mentioned over here and the data byte in the accumulator okay so now again in this very same way let's just think of an example let's say the accumulator uh, well it contains the data byte for example um, F5H okay and uh, on the other hand uh, we'd have let's say the uh, let's say register B on the other hand okay let's say contains a data byte of let's say 8 um, okay 89H right and now we want to perform uh, the logical AND operation between them so I mean sorry logical OR operation between them so what we do is that if we want to use this ORA instruction we can just write here ORA and give the name of the register B whose data byte we want to perform logical OR with the accumulator data okay so we write here OR B so I mean OR, ORA B okay so this ORA instruction uh, well it, its a specific register can be you know anyone uh, starting from the register A B C D E um, H and L okay so it can be any of them alright now after this instruction gets executed uh, if we basically give the uh, corresponding binary codes for F5 and 89H okay then upon performing bitwise OR operation the corresponding bits of the accumulator data and the data in register B I mean their corresponding bit position data will be uh, well logically ORed so 1 and 1 let's say if we just take the D0th position over here so 1 and 1 makes I mean ORing 1 and 1 we get 1 as a result okay and then you move on to the position D1 and the corresponding bit position D1's data we can see that both in with the accumulator data and in the data in register B both their D1 data uh, are basically 0 bits so performing bitwise OR again we get 0 and if we just carry on this way then we're gonna get well 0 and then 0 again sorry I'm just making a mistake <laughs> I don't mind at that we're supposed to get here 1 and then 1 again 1 1 1 and this one also as 1 so now we 
will get a hex result. So this is our binary result, and uh, this expressed in hex becomes, well, f d h, okay? So we're supposed to get this particular result, which after the execution of this instruction would get itself stored in the accumulator, okay? So this is what will happen over here. And uh, now if we just think about the ORI instruction, then like the ANI, here we don't need to use the register B at all. Instead, we could have just, let's say if, if the accumulator, well, it contained, well, F5H, we remember that. So if we would have just written, I mean, if we'd, we would have just used the ORI instruction, then we could have had, you know, or this data byte 89H directly with the accumulator data. How? We would only require to write this instruction, you know, somewhat this way, sorry, ORI, and then give the 8-bit data, that is 89H, okay? So I'm just performing the same operation as before. So what this instruction does is that it just directly or instantly ORs, I mean bitwise ORs, okay? this 8-bit data that is 89H with the accumulator data byte and again the same result we get okay we, we just you know see the same perf uh, I mean same operation being performed and as a result we get the same uh, uh, data that is FDH which just gets stored in the accumulator in the end okay so that's how the logical R instructions work it's quite I mean how they are declared and all is the same uh, as in the case of the logic and instructions so you can just get a pattern over here that for whichever instruction I mean whichever logic instruction we would have an A in the end their corresponding operands are the specified registers see for AND and OR we get the same sort of pattern and whichever logic instruction has an I in the end their corresponding operands are any specified 8-bit data so is that for the OR as well as the AND instructions okay and of course this is exactly the list of how the flag bits are modified with this kind of an operation okay and next we have the logical XOR instructions okay now I've just included an XOR gate in case you just uh, you know forget what uh, the sort of you know uh, you know um, the result you're supposed to expect for an XOR operation okay now you can just check this truth table out over here now if A and B are the inputs and Y represent the uh, output bits okay then uh, you can just see a pattern emerging that whenever both the input bits would be of the same value like for example if both of them are 0 or both of them are 1 then only the output or the result is a logic 1 otherwise it's a logic 0 okay so similar is the case over here and again like the previous instructions wherever we saw that uh, well we, we, we again have two types of instructions over here the XOR instructions XRA and XRI the A I mean the XRA uh, has the specified register as its operand whereas the XRI okay the one with the I in the end has an 8-bit data okay and it just you know instantaneously or, or just instantly uh, you know performs the bitwise XOR operation between the accumulator data and the specified 8-bit data okay so these instructions work in the very same way and are declared in the exact same way as we had seen for the previous instructions so let's just uh, uh, try an example over here so if we would let's say the register A I mean the accumulator if it has a result I mean has a data of let's say 05H okay and let's say we have the register C right now loaded with um, a byte of um, what could it be okay F2H alright so then in this case if we would write here uh, now since we want to perform the logical XOR operation between the data byte in register C and the one in the register uh, I mean with the data byte in register A so we would write here XRA and specify the name of the register C so we want to logically bitwise XOR the data byte of the register C with the one in A so that's the meaning of this instruction okay now if we'd check the operation then this is the kind of 
result that we should get okay and again like the previous cases this would again be I mean the result would again be stored in the accumulator okay and if we were to perform the same operation using the XRI instruction then we wouldn't need to involve any other register like in the previous cases we could have just you know directly written well X RI now let's thinking that well the accumulator had the 05H data previously we would have needed to write well XRI um, okay F2H okay then this would have just resulted uh, in in the same operation as you'd seen over here and generated the same result which would be again stored in the accumulator okay and finally and similarly like the uh, previous instructions uh, for the XRA the specified register well, can be any register starting from A to L okay and here is how the flag bits are affected upon this particular uh, you know operation that would take place inside the 8085 okay now we have the complement ins instruction that's the last one over here so it's just known as CMA meaning complement accumulator okay that's how uh, it's just uh, you know named okay now you can see that only this is the instruction in this uh, video that we are seeing here that doesn't have any operands okay so it, what it does is that it just complements the data byte present in the accumulator okay so let's just give an example over here so let's imagine that the accumulator okay this is register A has a data byte of okay let's say F2H okay and now if we would write here CMA okay then what it happen is that if F2 if we just would take the binary code of F2 okay then we're supposed to get well yeah this is what we're supposed to get okay now upon executing this instruction CMA once this is executed then the entire uh, data byte that is present in the accumulator that is F2H it would just get complemented so the complement of F2H would be nothing but well double zero double zero and one one zero one so you can see that in places where there uh, were logic one bits they just turn to logic zero bits okay and uh, vice versa so in this case the resultant I mean the complement of <laughs> the data byte F2H can be well expressed in the hex code as uh, well we can just you know express it as let's just check it out okay it should be 0 and 1100 yeah D so that should be was well, 0 DH so this is what the I mean the result would be if we would perform CMA and then this result like all the previous ones would get stored in the accumulator once again okay and this is the probably uh, the only logic operation for which the flag bits remain unaffected okay and now it's worthwhile to mention that the CMA uh, instruction is just a single byte instruction okay and uh, again the XRA and the XRI where the XRA is just a single byte instruction uh, while XRI is two bytes so I'll give you a pattern over here so whenever whichever uh, logic uh, operation would have an A in the end they would be just one byte instructions okay and those that have an I in the end they are two byte instructions okay so similar would be the case for the ORA where ORA is, is uh, a single byte okay it's gonna be a single byte instruction while ORI would comprise two bytes whenever stored in any memory and similarly in the case of the logical AND operations ANA would be a single byte instruction whereas the ANI would be a two byte instruction okay so that said we just wrap up our discussion on the uh, logical instructions right over here and we hope to see you next in the forthcoming tutorial so till then it's gonna be a short goodbye for now and thanks for watching